To introduce the panel, I'm looking at the wrong deck. Where am I? I'm sorry, give me a second. Oh, here we go. Yes. Uh, so, can I have Dr. Jassim Haji up on stage? Dr. Jassim is the president of the Artificial Intelligence Society. And the panel is going to be discussing AI transforming the future, promises, opportunities, and challenges of artificial intelligence. Thank you very much. AI, why is it AI? Why is AI? Yes, why not machine learning? Because it upsets me. Everywhere I go, they write artificial intelligence. But nobody, artificial intelligence is a very generic term. It and is. And I'm mostly discussing machine learning, right? Well, the machine learning is uh, a branch of it. Yes. And when it gets to the algorithms, etc. cetera, uh, of course, you can also talk about the deep learning. Deep learning. Exactly. Um, I will uh, take a few minutes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm here speaking today on the behalf of uh, international group of artificial intelligence. Maybe you mentioned artificial intelligence society, but that's the, the, the other hat. Uh, the international group of artificial intelligence established uh, uh, just under a year ago uh, with partnership GC Media and uh, the co-thinking of Tushar, Tushar uh, Sahu, is probably not here, but uh, uh, he's the unknown soldier between our success. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. We've started with probably no less than 15, 20 members. Today we are over 250 and growing as becoming the fastest growing artificial intelligence organization in the whole world with members from over 25 countries uh, representing as board advisors, but also bringing in the members. Of course, by end of this conference, hoping to even grow by more than 10, 20 percent. There's a big dynamics about it. We had several key conferences this year. We had uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, he mentioned why AI and machine learning. What we're trying to do to beat it to death for everybody to understand what is AI, not to come every six months and have a conference and go away. Um, for instance, we had AI in sports. One of the first AI in sports conferences in the Middle East, but also in Asia. Imagine nobody has done this. We had last week AI in courts. Again, the first uh, discussions around AI in judiciaries law which was actually uh, conducted in expo dubai not, not far from here and the presence of all the ministry of justice in the gcc general secretary of gcc it was very high level that people got impressed to now apply it in the middle east and gcc in their courts and judiciaries we have next week another one of actually two weeks from now on AI and higher education, how universities are changing their functions with AI, and so on. Uh, the, the, the theme becomes continuous discussions, continuous dissemination. Now, without further ado, to, to let you listen to the deep discussions on this, uh, we brought some of the board advisors all the way from Europe, from Middle East, and even South America. One of them traveled 15 hours today to take part in this panel. And others, of course, no less than seven, eight hours. Interesting group. And these are some of our expertise that we had the same things happening last week, uh, bringing them from different parts of Europe yeah. to conduct an exciting presentations on that. Now, I will give it back to you to introduce the teams. But next time we see you, we have passed to my opinion, over 700 and maybe 60 to 70 countries. So for more information, we are all around here. The, the advisory boards are here. I'm very proud of them. And also, I thank my colleagues from Bahrain sitting there who were supporting us all the way today. Thank you very much. Over to you.
I do have to, yes. All right, for the panelists, can I have up on stage Emmanuel R., the co-director of the Global AI Ethics Society. Next, we got Atsu Momchilovic, the co-director of the Global AI Ethics Institute and the co-founder of IGO AI. Dr. Thiago Felipe Avanci, lawyer, professor of law, board member, also member of IGO AI. Thank you for joining us. And Jorge Sebastiao. Did I pronounce that correct? Sebastiao. Better? Jorge is correct? George. George Sebastiao. The co-founder of the Global Blockchain Organization. And saving the best for last. Dr. Manal Jalul, founder of AI Lab, certified instructor and university ambassador of NVIDIA, lecturer at the American University of Beirut. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So welcome, everyone, to the panel discussion on AI transforming the future, opportunities, and challenges of artificial intelligence. So I'm really glad to be here. I'm Manal Jalul, and uh, Basil already introduced me. I'm a lecturer and researcher at the American University of Beirut. I'm also a certified trainer and university ambassador working with NVIDIA's Deep Learning Institute. I'm also the, the founder of AI Lab. It is an artificial intelligence and data analytics consultancy uh, company offering consultancy services, solution development in these emerging technologies. It's my pleasure uh, to be here with you today and to welcome you all to our panel discussion. So I'm really pleased to have you with us along with our esteemed set of panelists. We are going to look at this discussion as an opportunity to raise awareness about AI, its vast potential societal impact, as well as its underlying risks and concerns. So I'm going to start by introducing our uh, esteemed panel. We have Dr. Emmanuel Goffi, an, an AI ethicist. Uh, he is the co-director of the Global AI Ethics Institute and the representative of the International Group of Artificial Intelligence representing France in our advisory board. Welcome, Dr. Emmanuel. We have Dr. Tiago Felipe Avanci. He has a PhD in economics and political law from Brazil. He, he also did his postdoctoral stage in new, new technologies and law from Michir, Italy. He's a professor of law since 2009, a researcher at Polytechnique School of Brazil. He's Brazil's advisory board member at the IGO AI. He's also an expert board member at Global AI Ethics. We also have with us uh, George uh, Sebastiao, and George is a technology thought leader, influencer, and ICT expert in the area of cybersecurity with more than 35 years of experience in technology systems. He is the co-founder and executive director of the Global Blockchain Organization and the CTO of, of Confidential, as well as the advisor of Government Blockchain Association. Thank you for being with us, uh, George. We have Ako Momsadovic from Croatia. Ako is the co-director and co-founder of the Global AI um, uh, Ethics Institute. He is also the owner of Future HR. A company. He is Croatia's country representative advisor in the IGO AI uh, advisory board. So over the years, the growth in the use of artificial intelligence has been staggering. This revolution has been fueled by the massive, uh, uh, the massive advancements in computational power as well as the massive amounts of data that are now available due to the uh, globalization of digitization. So this has led to a gl uh, golden new era for AI. Artificial intelligence has moved into the mainstream of businesses and governments, and business leaders are ta rushing to take advantage of the benefits that can be brought to a wide array of industries to help increase productivity. So today, you ask your smartphone virtual assistant just to become a meeting for you. And then you, you get this message from your bank alerting you if you did a certain transaction. 
Then you get recommendations of movies to watch online or perhaps online purchases based on your past behavior. So this is AI penetrating and entering our lives. AI is here and the pace is accelerating. Governments need to know how to move with it because if they use it right, then harn by harnessing the potentials and maybe mitigating the risks and challenges, then AI can have a transformative power. It can be you know, a weapon or it could be a tool to help us solve the world's biggest challenges. My first question is for you, Echo. What is the role of governments in fostering AI innovation and AI adoption? What are your recommendations regarding the need maybe for a national AI innovation policy, especially for small and mid-sized countries? So what are the risks that those countries may have to face if they are not following the trends and investing in AI development? Well, thanks for the question. This is for me a very important topic and I'm working my PhD thesis on it. So basically there are many potential answers to it, but none of them is conclusive at the moment. What we are thinking and we are gathering some data uh, is basically the following. If we consider the artificial intelligence as one of the general purpose technologies, then for sure it will be transformative. At this moment we still are not completely sure, but what is happening and what can we perceive is basically all of us are more or less believing the following. AI is going to transform our businesses, our countries and our lives. And it's going to happen because it happened with the previous general purpose technologies. And those are the steam engine, the electricity and then the internet. Because everybody has electricity right now. Okay? So we are counting the same will happen with artificial intelligence. But actually it might not. There are differences and uh, there are things that are going to happen to the countries that are start to lag behind. So the awareness about artificial intelligence and thus this conference is extremely important for that. For that. Let me give you one example and it's relatively recent. The survey and the article from McKinsey show the following. So basically the front runners are going to have immense impact from artificial intelligence, both on the company level or on the social level. The late adopters are going to have certain positive impact. So something is going to happen to them, but not close as comparison to those who are going to firstly adopt it. And what we are not considering, because it is not easy for us and it is not it kind of, it is under unconscious, those who are going to lag behind are going to be in the negative effect. So basically they're going to lose their competitiveness, they're going to lose their chances, they're going to have to spend much more money just to tag along, which is of course uh, a significant finding and way of thinking. So for that purpose uh, in Croatia and in some other countries in Europe we are uh, establishing the AI think tank which is dealing specifically with the questions of uh, artificial intelligence and small and medium countries because we cannot compare ourselves with, with China, with United States, probably with UK, but we are all going to feel the effects of what we are going to do with artificial intelligence or not. So of course there are some good trends I would say. Uh, if we would consider the cost of, of some AI projects, for example the training the AI models, from the open AI, everybody probably here knows the GPT-3. So you would need uh, approximately between, they're estimating four to five million dollars to train a model, up to 12 million dollars. And this goes without the initial cost of investment in the infrastructure. And obviously this is not something that is possible for a lot of small companies, uh, startups and many other players. What is happening in the recent developments of the technology is that that cost actually is going significantly down. So basically now there are some uh, initial research that is, uh, that is uh, showing us that basically it could be done for, for example, $300,000, which is a le whole new level uh, and, and really significant difference. So I would say, yeah, it's time to, to seriously get on the train. It is time to, to raise awareness and it is on all of us basically the responsibility to, to give our contribution on this 
complex subject which I just touched uh, superficially uh, in this short answer. Thank you, thank you, Echo. You brought in very, very important points. And so I need to stress out there is a need for medium and small sized countries to catch up with the revolution. They cannot just be, be seated in the back seat and watch what things are happening, but they have to draft a national AI strategy to, to foster the development and, and deployment and adoption of AI in their own countries. And starting early will let them to really catch up with the train, implement AI, develop it in house. Thank you, Echo. My question next is for you, Tiago. At this relatively early stage in AI's development and, and implementation, the issue has arisen of AI adhering to certain ethical rules. And the ability of existing laws to govern AI has emerged as key to how future AI will be developed, deployed, and implemented. The issue of governing AI has actually entered the mainstream with both governments and private companies from across the world, specifically from major geopolitical parties like the US, China, the EU, all of them, India, including India, formulating statements and policies regarding AI ethics. So when it comes to AI and governance, can you tell us from your expertise, where, where does AI come when it comes to fundamental rights and privacy? Could AI be regarded as a potential transgressor of rights? So could you elaborate more on AI and governance? Thank you for your question, my friend. Thank you very much. I guess the audio is okay. Uh, let's see. Um, the first thing that I'd like to share with you, my friends, is we have had in Brazil uh, some nice conference on AI bill. Brazil recently uh, approved, has approved uh, an AI bill, and this is mainly governance uh, taking an effect, taking a matter of fact. And the governance is quite essentially connected with fundamental rights, which are the few that we are studying in the past 15 years or so. Uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence and governance in general, we must understand that there is uh, at least two points, two main points that must be uh, highlighted. The first point, uh, the artificial intelligence as a tool to guarantee fundamental rights in general, and the second point, the, the potential misuse of artificial intelligence, and that's precisely what you share with us you now. And the same thing as Ato also mentioned. Uh, this, this is a, a particular sensitive point for everyone, every country or worldwide, because we all see today uh, as artificial intelligence can be used for the nice things, nice applications in different sectors we saw on, on, on the trains, uh, on computing, on the building, and several different sectors with different persons talking about how can artificial intelligence can be improving, use improving our lives, and I believe in that. But we also must to understand, must to realize that there is some preoccupations concerning and, and special privacy. Uh, and that's a sensitive point, as I mentioned, because um, when we talk about fundamental rights, uh, there is some problems, some uh, difficulties on implementing artificial intelligence uh, uh, precisely uh, because of the data, the collecting data from the people. Uh, you all know, my dear friends, that data is the currency of 21st century, is a commodity of the 21st century, and we must deal with data with very much cautions approach uh, there is another, no other way to deal with this. And that's the, the importance to have a nice and strong governance to guarantee that data, that data is used on artificial intelligence, on especially in machine learning, artificial intelligence for a uh, nice purpose, for nice uh, reasons. Uh, in short, I'd like to state, Manal, that um, uh, it's, it's quite important 
for us to understand, to comprehend, and to realize that artificial intelligence and the data used can be collected from the companies with profits. It's, it's all good, all natural, and, and it's desirable, but that must be uh, some uh, cautions, some cares that these companies uh, should take on collecting this. And that's governance, and that's the importance of governance, and that's the importance of respecting uh, fundamental rights, per se. So you are absolutely right, uh, uh, Tiago. Perhaps there is a need to draft laws to protect the customer, customer's privacy, and protect uh, the, his sharing of information, especially through the apps that we con constantly use. So it's really hidden from the user the way the data is being collected by, by those apps and how they are eventually used by AI to build up models to be used for other purposes. So there needs to be clear rules, clear laws to protect uh, uh, customers' privacy and, and to have some transparency with the, with the user of these applications. Thank you, Tiago. Thank you. So AI will become essential in our lives, and that is inevitable. We, we all agree on that. We've seen throughout the day different applications of AI and how IT companies are you know, working very hard to advance AI development, to integrate AI through their applications. And we've also seen the effectiveness of adding AI to applications and how it can really improve our lives, automate tasks, uh, help out everybody in their, uh, in, their, in their work, create more opportunities for improvement. Despite that, there are some loopholes in these so perfect AI systems, and recently something called algorithmic bias has emerged with these AI systems. So the lack of fairness that results from a performance of a computer system is by definition called algorithmic bias. And recently, a lot of AI systems have shown algorithmic bias uh, whether it's, it was uh, based on a, a distinction or bias against gender or, or b belonging to a certain ethnic group. So under the hood of these AI systems, because of the way data is being collected perhaps, bias has appeared and emerged. And what's really dangerous when, when having bias in AI is that these AI systems may accelerate bias themselves, right? So. Human bias has always been an issue, and it has been you know, studied in psychology for years. And over the last few years, there has been signs that shown that these, our own human bias, have penetrated into the AI systems that we are building, and these will create tremendous threats, especially for those marginalized groups who are already marginalized groups. We don't want, need AI to come and you know, make it more worse for them. So my question next is for you, Emmanuel. What is the root cause for introducing bias in AI systems? Can we prevent it or not? And what are the adverse effects of bias in AI? OK, thank, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, bias is a really big issue today. We, we hear about that uh, here and there all the time. And what I want to offer you, and maybe uh, you will disagree with me, and that would be great if you disagree with me, uh, is kind of a thought-provoking perception or perspective on what biases are exactly. Uh, because we hear too much of resumes, of resumes based on previous resumes. So what I want to, you to think about is that biases are mainly about ethics, which is what we are doing with the Global AI Ethics Institute. We are trying to think ethics in a different way. So here, when we talk about biases, there is something that is really interesting, but it's never dealt with, which is the fact that bias is in itself a biased concept. When we talk about privacy, when we talk about discrimination between genders, skin colors, social uh, status, this kind of thing, it's really a biased way. It's a specific perspective that we have on the acceptability or the non-acceptability of such discriminations. In some places, discrimination between male and female is not a problem at all, right? So we have to accept that. We do not have to agree with that, but we have to accept that there are perspectives in the rest of the world, I mean, outside of the Western world, where discrimination between gender is not something as an issue. We have to accept that in some places, discrimination between skin colors is not an issue. It's not 
just kind of, you know, a normal relation between people, you know, social status, the tribes you come from, the village you come from, it's something normal to have this kind of difference, and it's part of this social arrangement that we can find in some places. So when we talk about biases and we say we have to mitigate or we have to remove biases, we have to take into account that it's a biased perspective on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. This leads me to, to say the following, is that it's ethical. Acceptability, non-acceptability, right, wrong, good, bad, is all about ethics. When you travel around the world, you can see that what is acceptable in one place would not be acceptable in another one. And conversely, what is not acceptable in one place can be acceptable in another one. So the point what is that so far what I've seen is too many perspectives coming from the Western world. It is why I really value the fact to be here today, exactly, and I'm, I'm really grateful to, uh, to, uh, to Dr. Haji for, for me being part of the international group of artificial intelligence, because with my colleagues here, Brazil, Portugal, Croatia, Lebanon, lots of other people, if you go to our website, you'll see that we're covering a, a really huge area. It's just an exchange of perspective. We do not always agree with each other, and that's not the point. The point is just to having a debate on what we think, what are, what are our perspectives, and what, what is the weight, this is something that has been dealt with uh, earlier today, what is the weight of culture in our assessment of artificial intelligence when we think about it in an ethical stance. Just, just want to mention that it's really important. In some places in the world we live in, ethics is not even a question. It's really Western-oriented to speak about ethics like Aristotle and just bringing that to the rest of the world. Right? In some places, you don't have this kind of question. So my point is to say that with the International Group of Artificial Intelligence, with the Global Institute, uh, the Global uh, Ethics, AI Ethics Institute that we are uh, co-leading with ADSO, we are just trying to raise awareness about the fact that when we talk about biases, for example, we have to keep in mind that we are ourselves biased in the way we act biases. So I would say, and I did, this, is my, this is my message to the Western world, okay, before even addressing others' biases, mind your own bias, which is a Western bias about how the world should go and what should be acceptable in this or that place. And just maybe if we are able to do that at some point, instead of lecturing other countries, other cultures about what they should do and what they should not do, maybe we would be able to create what we're creating here and with the International Group of Artificial Intelligence, a real debate, real debate. And, and I, I can tell you that it's, it's really something fantastic because it opened doors to a new way of thinking. And once again, we do not agree with lots of things. That's not the point, that's not the problem, right? But we have really insightful discussions and we can go deep into the way, let's say, Tiago in Brazil, we, we work on this AI bill, how Brazil is addressing this issue, how Brazilian people are thinking about AI, what is the relation to this culture with technology, just think about Japan, just think about China, and the way they deal with, with technology, which is far away from what I know in France or in the Western world at, at, at large. So I think that, this is really my, my main, my main uh, point here, is that biases are a biased concept, and we have to take, that, to take that into account when we're trying to address the ethicality of artificial intelligence. Well, thank you. Thank you for bringing that uh, uh, up, Emmanuel. And as a matter of fact, nowadays, many companies have been using AI to detect human bias. So AI could be used to fight bias themselves. AI could be used to improve bias in AI. It could be a reflection of the bias that we have as a human. So thank you, Emmanuel. My next question is for you, Jorge. You're an expert in blockchain. So my question to you is that we hear about blockchain, IoT, AI, and these are emerging technologies all around us. They are driving the next wave of the digital transformation, and they are recognized as innovations that have the potential to improve current business outcomes and processes. So my question to you, can blockchain perhaps take AI to the next level by building more conscious applications? Could we, in a way, combine AI with blockchain and come up with something new and better? Um, yes, it's a pleasure to be here. 
Uh, one thing that is important when we build the modern systems of tomorrow, it's not about one single technology, but rather a combination of technologies used in a creative and usable way. AI is not new. AI has been with us for 30, 40 years plus. What is new is the computing um, capabilities being more decentralized and affordable, storage being uh, highly available, and telecommunications bandwidth also being highly available. So all of these three elements combined together creates a perfect storm to making AI accessible uh, and low cost. But AI by itself is not sufficient enough uh, to solve the entire problem for many reasons. First one, AI decisions are based on data. So let's assume you're being, building the smart city of tomorrow. In the typical smart city of tomorrow, you'll have uh, thousands of sensors through, from whom information is being collected. So you want to have the capability to identify and trust those sensors. So you need to build trust into the IoT devices uh, that are actually generating the data. So they need identification, authorization, protection. So obviously technologies like blockchain enable this. Uh, but blockchain actually goes beyond that. Blockchain also enables decentralization. So we can create decentralized applications of AI and multiple AIs actually combine together to create a more useful end result. Several elements still remain obviously to be addressed and that's obviously the element that you call about AI for good. Uh, we can call this conscientious AI. I think two of the previous presenters, the one about HP and the one about uh, Tomorrow for Education and our panelists here, talked a lot about ethics. Conscientious is ethics, but it's much more than that. Uh, it is also about, you can say, the sustainability development goals that are part of the United Nations and are being discussed at Expo 2020 and will be discussed later this year at Davos. When we combine these sustainability goals with AI, we achieve a much better result. So that means the AI is not at the service of AI, but AI is at the service of the people. Now, what does it really mean, AI at the service of the people? So AI is becoming more green by using the more efficient amount of resources. AI is removing bias. AI is addressing ethics and governance. AI allows people to have control over their data, which blockchain enables. So only users share the amount of data they allow. Example, if your data is ethical medical data, do you want every AI to have access to the full data or only a subset of that data? With these kind of new combinations of technologies, blockchain, AI, potentially even robotics, we are able to create a whole new generation of solutions. And what we call this is conscientious solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. So my question, next question is, uh, do, we, do we have more time? Out of time. So I guess we're, we're nearly out of time. We still have a lot of questions to ask our panelists. Uh, but, but I guess we reached the end of our time. It has been a pleasure for me and the rest of the panel to, to, to be here with you and to address these critical issues. Personally, I really benefit from the uh, critical uh, points that our panelists have brought in. Uh, so thank you again and uh, have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you.